Am I on? Good morning. Can you hear me? Hi there. My name is Evan Aiken. I am Data Vale's executive advisor for their retail and restaurant vertical. And I'm going to be talking about the importance of customer analytics, and I'll, I'll jump straight to the punchline. You know, it's never been a harder time right now for customer loyalty. The fight for that customer dollar is daunting. And it's a macroeconomic problem, perhaps overbuilding, entrants like uh, prepare at home meal, delivery services, these threats that create this uncertainty because our customer is demanding. And so customers are becoming very selective. In fact, Nation's Restaurant News reported, and I'm sure this is not news to all of you, that same store sales dropped 1.1%, traffic fell 3.4% in the first quarter of this year. So because costs aren't declining at the same pace as revenues, the margin reduction created from these threats translates into a mandate to rationalize all initiatives, especially those that are traffic driving and revenue driving programs. Fortunately, technology has created a boom in digital and data capabilities to boost traffic driving attribution and return on investment. This is causing a sea change of dollars to move from traditional media and direct to online, digital, and mobile. Winterberry Group reported that for the first time, digital marketing spend actually passed TV spend for ad dollars in 2016. So where is the puck headed? If digital marketing and technology firms are going to find new and creative ways to create and nurture customer relationships and, dem and demonstrate their successful results, they need to focus on marketing data onboarding customer analytics, segmentation, and clustering as just a few ways to generate new customer journeys. The ideal world for your digital marketing and technology teams is to create as intimate a conversation as they can using big data methods. Knowing your customers intimately means more than a name, means more than an email address, it's more than a Facebook post. It's more than a tweet. It's actually all of these things. And understanding why they choose you, or sometimes why they choose you. Savvy digital marketing and technology teams want to know why their customers choose them, because it gives them a leg up on being able to control their future behaviors. Of course, knowing why is a big question without necessarily easy answers, but leveraging a data approach will help your teams draw inferences, gain insight to best reach conclusions on the why. This world of big data starts with a single 360 degree view of your customer, including proprietary data. So think of the transactional information coming through systems like your point of sale. It includes psychographic data. This is data that is about them, their lifestyle data. Think of their opinions, likes, dislikes, e-commerce activity. Think of firmographic data. That was a new term to me recently, but it's starting to embrace where they work, what they do for work, their commutes to work. <clears throat> The conclusion of all of this, I believe, is in that same study by Winterberry Group, and I'll quote them, that if personalization of marketing across the customer journey is the holy grail, then recognition through identity matching and validation is at the center of marketing transformation. So let's talk about some obstacles we have to overcome to get to that center of marketing transformation. So on average, restaurants know fewer than 10% of their customers by name. Even the best in class restaurants know about half of their guests. But don't confuse restaurant team members with your marketing teams in this equation. Your restaurant team members most likely know 
more than 10% of their guests. This means there's a chasm between the customer knowledge your restaurant team members have and the knowledge that your digital marketing and technology teams have. So why is that? Well, time and touch has its advantages. So digital marketing and technology teams need to somehow make up for the lack of time and touch. So there are issues that stand in the way of marketers ideal and overcoming this and three of them that I wanted to talk about today. The first issue is what I call BI not for all. That's a loud thunderclap. <laughs> this BI not for all is really a problem where restaurants find they have parallel data paths within their restaurant operations. On one path, finance and operations have spent time, effort, and dollars investing in data warehouses, business intelligence systems that are blending back office data, point of sale data, and other restaurant performance data like labor systems to judge or to grade restaurant performance. On the other path, marketing and digital teams have spent time, effort, and dollars investing in agencies that curate customer information in the agency systems and agency proprietary data structures. So it's expensive to bring marketing requirements about the customer into those finance and operational data structures. And then it's expensive to bring the finance and operational data into your agency systems, your marketing agency systems. So they remain separate islands of information. And marketing is only then getting a partial view of the customer as it translates into the restaurant operation. So furthermore, marketing teams end up getting held hostage by those proprietary agency data structures. The expense of managing these parallel paths can be overwhelming for restaurant companies. The second obstacle that I talk about is over-reliance on loyalty. And don't get me wrong, loyalty programs are great in learning about your customers but they're starting to show some consequences when over-relied upon for marketing communications. Two reasons, really. First, loyalty is at best, best in class, about half of your customer. And most likely, you're sitting far less than knowing half in your loyalty program. So there's a problem with missing the other half. Second, Loyalty cards, and DataVail has analyzed this within loyalty programs, get attached to households where one card is being used by many individuals. Raise your hand if you do that at restaurants, gas stations, kids, you know what I'm talking about. So in those cases, marketing to a loyalty member is good enough because loyalty is being used by more than one persona. So the marketing message ends up coming in at the mean or the center of that activity when the activity is actually happening at the poles. So this creates very broad communication that missed the audience. So finally, my last issue is what I call the Picasso customer. I think we've all seen a, a Picasso painting where it kind of looks like a face, but it's not a face that we've ever seen in real life. In the same way, restaurant companies are being handed a Picasso customer because they have a different agency for your email club than loyalty, perhaps a different agency doing social media marketing than your mobile app. So agencies have weaved their way in to really controlling various aspects or cornerstones of your customer profile. And when different agencies are controlling data generated in their program, they're going to be presenting you pictures of what they see about your customer. You then, as marketers, have to pull that together into what I call this Picasso customer. And again, kind of looks like 
what you think one of your customers might look like, but not really. So if we start with the premise that digital marketing and technology teams have a right to that 360 degree view of their customers, what then does marketing data onboarding look like? So the best place to start in your concept is really aggregating the customer data you already have. So you just think about it for your concept. I won't ask you to close your eyes. Think of where your customer demographics live. Think of where your customer relations data live, your loyalty data, your email club data, online ordering data. If your concept supports catering, where does your catering data sit? All of these journeys and channels take a customer and leave an imprint there. DataVail focuses on bringing or aggregating these many data points together into that single data, what we call a customer data pane of glass. That data pane of glass doesn't have to require a new system or technology platform. That's not what we're about. We have seen how restaurant companies can leverage many of their existing data and business intelligence platforms to get a great start on developing that first step of that holistic view. The aggregation is not just a one-time event. What we focus on is building freeways to those data sources to continuously bring in updates from those same point of sale, loyalty, customer relations systems. So once you've aggregated and connected the customer to that data pane of glass, First, internally, DataVail then reaches externally to enrich your internal knowledge of the customer. And we do this by connecting to data sources that live beyond the four walls of your restaurant, beyond the four walls of your partners, beyond those four walls of your agencies. We work with large data aggregators that have helped numerous databases from social profiles, online, general retail e-commerce behavior, and other lifestyle sources to expand on that single customer data record to hundreds and hundreds of attributes. As that single pane of glass starts to expand with new attributes, it provides a robust data pool to begin to analyze, draw conclusions, and act. And a common step at this point before diving into that one-to-one -one conversation, to first take a look at the groups that start to form. You may have your lonely lunchers, those that tend to see you for lunch and dine alone. You may have your date nighters that always dine together. So you start by knowing these segments and the value of these segments to your brand and what motivates these segments to behave the way they do it sets you up for future success in communicating, messaging, campaigning, and offering. So I want you to just stop and ask yourself, what could you do if you knew the name, contact info, pleasures, hobbies of someone that had ordered $20,000 of takeout from you in a year? You might want to think about sending them a thank you note, perhaps tickets to their favorite musical artists that's coming into town, as one of our clients did. Arjun Sen <clears throat> writes in his book, Customer Karma, that you really need to celebrate your top customer. But it becomes difficult if you haven't taken the time to assemble a complete view of your customer. So now to stop and think about the potential. Where could this customer data lead? a single source of information that can be used to predict future customer behavior. Tapping into means such as artificial intelligence, even machine learning. These methods to create a faster loop of you being able to communicate to your customer. So think of the possibility of not just geo-targeting your customer, which identifies relative to where their phone is and your restaurant location, but think of 
adding into that geolocation this data pane of glass. Now you're sending them a very specific message that they are going to be higher or greater likelihood of pulling in to your location. Or think about a loyalty program that automatically moves customers into hundreds, perhaps thousands of different reward tiers based on their behavior, based on their likes, based on their lifestyle attributes. I saw a report published by the AP about Starbucks. And if anyone from Starbucks is in here, kudos. They're pushing into more personalized offer and these loyalty members and mobile app users, they're actually going to the point where they're including real-time suggestive selling based on past purchases for people ordering ahead. So they've seen an 8% increase in the last quarter based on this new communication and tapping into a faster communication cycle with their customer. But I don't want us to get out over our ski tips. I'm from Denver, Colorado, so forgive me. There is a sequence that you have to go through before you get to those artificial intelligence or machine learning. And that's really laying that single pane of glass through that marketing data onboarding exercise that we talked about. Once you hit that step, it becomes so much easier because your data is collected in an area where you can now harness it in faster real-time analytics. And so what are the results? Well, we've talked about a number of examples, but how might this translate to a more efficient, effective digital marketing and technology process within your concept? So let's start by a simple return on investment equation. So your brand not only pays for each message sent through your email execution or marketing automation tools, but consider the investment of your time or your team's time in creating those messages, that content. Marketing data onboarding of your customer into that single data pane of glass can lead to higher conversions on marketing communications and even smaller marketing communications in terms of volume of customers it goes to. Therefore, it achieves a greater likelihood that your content is meaningful and the customer is listening. But it doesn't stop at marketing communications. Think of the application or results you could have in your concept for your newfound knowledge of customer in menu analysis or day part decision making. What happy hour specials would be more meaningful to a Cavs fan versus a Warriors fan? But I don't want to take a side right now. Another possible application is in your construction or location analysis. Your company or perhaps your company's agency is already maybe tapping into certain geographical information, perhaps income levels in the area. But what decisions would you be making differently if you knew areas you were considering had a higher or lower population of retirees or a larger population of Cavs fans or Warriors fans? basketball fan. Think of a 360 degree view and its application with those things that you test or promote in your restaurant. You know, some of you may be familiar with a package that's used in the industry called APT or Applied Predictive Technology. They're a test and learn platform that allows you to test against control groups. Even if you don't have a formal test and learn process, Think of the richer results that could come from whatever testing process you're using by connecting up to that customer warehouse and starting to make decisions on various control customer populations or control personas and starting to evaluate the differences of how those segments are responding to your tests and promotions. Finally, your digital marketing and technology teams have a possibility of using this for website and app personalization. When you know more about your customer, the online digital ad placements can be smarter. So you think about those well-placed YouTube ads for the Cavs and the Warriors fans. So 
conclusion, first of all, I just want to thank all of you for attending. What a great venue this is. And I hope you all have a great weekend. And I hope it started out really well this morning. Please come up after. Feel free to talk to me. Feel free to talk to Thomas, Dominic, Robin. We're just over at booth 6672, a couple aisles over. I just want to leave you with, with an encouragement that customer intimacy is within your reach. The start of this comes from the data you most likely already have within your brand. Stop renting your data and instead own that 3D view of the customer. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to speaking with you.